Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Before we hop into the charts, I want to take a look at the, the non-sexy side of trading, right? Um, this is the stuff that you don't really hear about on YouTube videos. You don't really hear much about on commercials or social media. It's not just like the strategy and making money and Lamborghinis and stuff like that. This is the gritty, grindy, hard, frustrating, time expensive type of work that it takes to become a consistently profitable trader. It is, however, necessary. And the other day I got an email from Andrew, you guys on the, um, on the platform obviously know him for you guys that are watching here on YouTube. He's one of our tier one members. He's been with us essentially since the beginning of tier one trading. And he sent me a spreadsheet of kind of what he's been working on. Um, if you've been in any of the groups with him, uh, you know he's been putting in a massive amount of work um, with his strategy and developing it and tweaking it and kind of getting it to work the way that he wants it to and that's the big thing that we preach over here at tier one trading it's not just about taking a strategy and, and, and using it verbatim it's about taking a strategy and making it your own that way you can fit your trading around your life and what was interesting, right, as he's going through the spreadsheet, and as you can see, there's a massive amount of work he's put in, he said, Akil, I'm really starting to see why Adam Grimes, and Adam Grimes is a very high, highly respected trader and person in this industry, he says, I'm really starting to see why Adam Grimes says it takes about three to five years to become successful at trading. Now, some of you guys that are new, you're like, three to five years, what the heck? And um, that is the reality, again, it's not, it's not a get rich quick scheme, right? Trading is not one of those things you're gonna pick it up and learn it in a month to become consistently profitable. It is going to take a lot of time. And I was talking to Jason Greystone the other day. I did um, an interview for his Always Free podcast. He's, he's starting off kind of like a, a trader section of it. So of course you want to start with the best. Actually, I was more of a more of an appetizer. It was me first, and then he's got some much bigger fish coming up a little bit later, but I'm excited to be involved and included in it. Um, we're having a conversation a lot about um, mindset, the reality, and, and, and why that's one of the reasons that many traders fail, simply because they have the wrong expectations. And he shared with me that um, he was reading a review of Tier 1 Trading the other day. It was someone that came in, uh, came on the platform. They took the 14-day the risk-free trial membership, and you know they were doing what they were supposed to do. They were checking out some of the courses. They were involving themselves in the live room, and they were talking to a lot of the members on the platform to kind of get a, a lay of the land, I guess you can say. And the review said that, that and I'll remember it, uh, you know, the exact quote, but he said, I was talking to a trader on a platform and he's been here for a year. And I'm thinking to myself, if this guy's been here a year and he's not successful already, these guys must be selling garbage or something like that. And it's a great example of the wrong mindset. Now, I know I said Adam Grimes earlier says three to five years. We typically tell traders about, 12 to 18 months, that's about a year, a year and a half, usually about six to 12 months to actually learn how to trade, depending on kind of you know where you're at when you find us, and another six months to kind of get used to the reality of trading, right? There's a massive difference between demo trading and back testing and trading live with live money. So it's another six month period to kind of you know, work through those psychological and new trader mistakes. But typically after that time is when you start to feel yourself and, and, and find yourself as a trader, and you can start seeing some consistent success. And I guess if you take, um, this is once you've been educated, I guess if you take the, the part where you're not educated and you're kind of wandering around just looking for different things on the internet, you can easily waste a year or so doing that. So that three to five years probably is a realistic view. But this stuff is important to know because, or, or I guess, matter of fact, I'll, I'll let you listen to the podcast if you wanna go more into that topic. Um, continuing on the spreadsheet, one of the things that I broke down for Andrew, because his question was, hey, I've got some amazing results from this time to this time. Daddy. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, the wife grabbed him. <laughs> the little one tried to break it, and the wife snatched him away. Um, <laughs> if you guys ever remember the show uh, Showtime at the Apollo, I'm kind of dating myself right now. It's like when a, a bad performer goes up there, and the guy comes with the hook and just yanks him off the stage. It was pretty funny. He's upset, but he'll get over it. Um, but one of the things that Andrew wanted me to take a look at was um, he had a question about his results. He had some really amazing results for certain years, 
And then he hit a patch in time where the results were bad. He was looking for advice on, hey, what can I do? Should I be more aggressive, less aggressive with money management and whatnot? And my response, just to give you a, a brief version, is that it, there's always a give and a take. Um, it, it has more to do with the market conditions and his strategy not being built to handle the low volatility, sideways, choppy market conditions. And you know, he can lower the position size, uh, be less aggressive with the money management and position sizing strategy, um, and that will help kind of reduce the drawdown during that set period, but it's also going to take away from the gains in the other period. So it's kind of like a, a give and a take. Something that I've done in my career, right, I'm all about, and this comes from my investment background, probably in the stock market, and just in general with real estate and whatnot, is I'm all about diversification, right? So when I went to build my trading strategy, although I started with a single thing, right, I understood that that single thing worked in very specific market conditions. And there were times uh, during the year, there were times uh, maybe even for certain years where the market conditions weren't working the best for my strategy and I would struggle. Now, I would always rebound from that, but you can imagine during those times, it wasn't fun. So something I wanted to do is really balance out not just my trading portfolio, the pairs that I trade, but my strategies as well. That way I have something that really complements each other, um, but can handle different market conditions. So when the market is in a consolidative state, this strategy is going to stand out. When the market is directionally moving, this strategy is going to stand out. And yes, it takes away from the kind of the, the massive jumps in your equity curve, because when one strategy is doing really well, the other one's struggling a little bit. In general, it evens everything out, so it reduces that drawdown. If you kind of remember the video I did, uh, it must have been two weeks ago, we talked about one of the best ways to really make more money in the market is to keep more profit, so reducing the drawdown while keeping your extensions the same. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at a few different things. I'm going to get back to uh, some pattern stuff because this is stuff I haven't talked about in a while. I've been doing a lot of structure and breakout and, and stuff like that for you. We're going to talk about some pattern stuff because that's where I originally got started. Those have been working really well in periods of consolidation. Um, now I'm going to be on the daily chart, the higher time frame, because we have an election week coming up and um, <laughs> anything kind of intraday may get blown out the water. Um, so we're going to take a bigger look at, at some setups that may be happening this week, maybe happening if we get some type of big directional move in the market. I've also got a very special guest coming on for you as well, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So let's hit the disclaimer um, while that's going on. Do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, make sure that notification bell is hit. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, so I know I said we're gonna talk a lot about patterns today, but we're actually gonna do our first pair uh, just as a follow-up on a, a trade that we've been tracking really for a, a few weeks now that, that really hasn't given us an opportunity. But after it. Now, if you've been following these videos on a weekly basis, you know that this is the pound dollar, this is on the daily. We've been looking for a move up to 134. The dollar 34 has been our projection. We've been creeping higher there, as you can see. We just haven't had the opportunity to get involved. And here on the daily, for the start of the week, there's going to be another opportunity. You can see that. I won't take you through a, through a full recap, but we had head and shoulders here. We had a break of that level of structure, right? Our neckline right there. Um, we kind of retrace, extend it back up. We recently had another break and close above those structure highs here, right? And if you're new, we have a process called IPDE, identify, predict, decide, execute, where we want to identify what the market is doing. Based on what we identify, we can make a prediction on what it's likely to do next, and then we can go about deciding and, and obviously executing the trade. So each time we see one of these higher, high, higher closes, these violations of structure, each time we identify one of those, it allows us to make another prediction that price is likely to go in that intended direction. And then we want to think about how is it likely to go there. One of the ways that it can go there is what's called a pullback or a retracement. And that's when price kind of gives you some relief and it goes back down into the previous level of structure. And that's what we had right here, right? If we just kind of go back to the basics of drawing a price chart or reading the ebbs and flows, we got swing low to swing high, right? little swing high to swing low. Oh, new structure high right here. Another pullback right here. You can see how the market ebbs and flows. Every market does this, guys. Doesn't matter what you're looking at. Doesn't matter what time frame, right? You get a lot of questions. Does it do this on the, the weekly time frame? Does it do it on the, the two hour? It, it, every time frame moves the same. Some have more junk than others, right? You go down to the minute chart, you're going to get a lot of junk. Daily and up, you're going to get more kind of um, deliberate moves, uh, deliberate uh, signs, I guess you can say. But the market moves the same no matter what. 
And you can see after our last extension, new structure high right here, we have another outside return. And where does this outside return come to? Well, we come right back down to our previous level of structure. So if I can get my drawing tools working, <laughs> if there's a level that's gonna hold in the market as previous level of support, it should be right here, right? It should be right here. You can see that we had an outside return that came there before, Zoop. we had an outside return that came there again and held, Whoop. and now we're back down there for the third time while putting in new structure highs. Now, as we get down to the level, we have something else that happens, right? We end the week with an inside bar, right? An inside bar is the bar right here with this little yellow triangle. I'm on trading view right now. If you go to, um, not the best of trading view, if you go to indicators and just uh, type in inside bar, um, just go to this one right here. I guess the first one, I don't even know which one I use, but um, you can have this little indicator up to identify inside bars. Honestly, they're not too hard, but with most indicators, the job is to make life easier so you don't have to kind of zoom in and, and look at each thing. But an inside bar is a bar that completes completely inside the previous bar. So these are the extremes of this red candle beforehand. You can see how this bar completes completely inside of it. And an inside bar is basically a, a look at consolidation. If you were to go down to a lower time frame, it's basically the market's range getting smaller, right? And it's kind of obvious by the fact that it completes within the range of the previous candle. And we all know, or if you don't know, now you know, right? Consolidation leads to expansion, right? Think of the market as being kind of like a spring where you squeeze the spring tight, 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 tight. Eventually, boing, right? It breaks out. Um, so an inside bar is a breakout strategy. What we've been looking at is what's called a bias inside bar strategy, where instead of bracketing it both ways, we're looking for a specific breakout in a specific direction. So if you're someone that is using it, this would be an inside bar right? Your bias would be to the bullish side, right? Since we're sitting right at structure, you don't want to sell at support, right? So what you can look for is that if we break above that mother bar, right? Or if we break, excuse me, above that inside bar, that's going to get you filled to the upside. You can look for uh, initial targets at a retest of previous structure highs if you're able to take a conservative target. And then of course, a secondary target moving up to that 134 level. And it looks like that should be a 1618 retracement or extension, excuse me, I know things have changed since our movement here. Right around there, right around a 1618 Fibonacci retracement there as well. So you have some Fibonacci confluence, but we can worry about dialing down that level even more a little bit later. But keep an eye on the open, keep an eye to see which way um, the breakout happens. And that is a way to get involved for you guys that are have been tracking this trade and, and looking for ways to, to get involved in it. All right, we're going to stick on the daily chart right now. We're going to head over to the Euro Yen. Again, we're going to talk about some longer term stuff because there's an election coming up, right? November 3rd, I guess technically it's already started, but there's an election coming up um, and we don't know how that's going to affect the market. Now, I haven't done so yet, but I'm going to start doing my research on it. There's a, there's a video that I think Anthony Chung just put out. Um, let me see if I can get it for you real quick. Um, Anthony Chung, if, if you don't know, um, he's uh, someone who's a friend of tier one. We brought him into our last workshop. He did a fantastic presentation on fundamental analysis. And, and what I love about him is that he's not one of those funny, fundy traders where he's like, oh, technicals are garbage, fundamentals are everything, right? The stuff you hear all over the internet. He's realistic. He's like, yeah, fundamentals are, are good. Technicals are key. If, if I had to give advice to a trader, I would not try to be a full out fundamental trader. I would look to combine the two. And, and, and that's you know kind of my approach as well. I have, I have a technical bias when I was more of an investor. Um, and when I do investments in the market, I have a fundamental bias, but the technicals kind of give me the lay of the land, tell me where to enter and, and, and all of that fun stuff. But he's got a video, I haven't watched it yet, but I'll bring it over for you guys real quick. Um, called Your Guide to Trading the U.S. Election. So I'm going to check this out as soon as I'm done recording it. But I've made a habit each and every morning of watching Anthony's videos um, just to kind of get a, a fundamental lay of the land. I've I found it to be very helpful in my trading. It, it's easier than kind of going through loads of articles. Um, and I can do it kind of in the background while I'm doing my technical analysis as well, which is big. I can't read and chart at the same time, believe it or not. But Check it out. Now, I don't know what's going to happen in this election. I'm sure he's going to talk about that. We don't know who's going to win. You know, if the last election taught us anything where Hillary was a, a sure shot to win and she lost, 
um, we, we don't know what to know. And we also don't know when the results are going to come in with all the mail-in ballots and the fact that they can be, as long as they're postmarked by November 3rd, they can be counted two days later. The fact that Trump says, you know, hey, he may not concede if he loses. I don't even know if we're going to get any type of result or not. But it is a very important election. It is something to be aware of. As always with news, the deviation from the expectation is going to cause the bigger result. And what that means is that when the market, typically the market prices in what it expects already. Um, so if you're expecting Trump to lose, the market has priced that in already. If something were to happen that was the opposite, like last time when everyone banked in on Hillary Clinton winning and then all of a sudden she lost, that's where you see the massive panic, that's where you see the massive shift, and that's where you see the massive movement. And, and that, that goes for all news events, but um, more importantly for, for this election as well. So it'll be interesting. So I'm taking a long-term approach just because uh, I, I think we're going to get junk during it. But here on the Euro Yen, we do have a potential bearish bat pattern, right? And these are going to be advanced pattern formations. These are things, again, that form while the market is a consolidation. We actually had on our radar another one that was up here. I'll loosely draw it on X to A, A to B, B to C, and then C to D, which would have been up here. You can see the market obviously moved in the opposite direction. But what we do is we just re- uh, you know, remove our drawing tools and, and draw it on. So we're going to look at our first leg, right? We're going to look at this first leg as being our X to A. This is called our impulse leg. So this is the starting point of every pattern. And this is important to understand, right? I see a lot of traders that get into trouble with patterns because they look at the completion point first, and then they go back and try to make the rest of it work. And never a good thing if you're trying to make something work, right? So we always preach that you should go through it in order, right? There's a very specific order of what needs to be looked at and what order and what Fibonacci requirements are needed to be hit. Go through a checklist, right? One, two, three, four. If you if you saw last week's Q&A, we talked about this as well, right? Go through it in a very specific way. This is also a very good example of why you need to spend time on the foundational elements, right? Uh, talking about earlier how it takes a while for a trader to learn how to trade right if you just think you can hop into a strategy and trade it you're going to be wrong right because the first thing that you need to identify in any pattern formation is going to be the impulse leg the x to a leg the starting point this is no different than a swing low to swing high right all the stuff we talk about about reading the ebbs and flows of a market right if you can't identify this stuff guess what you're never going to be able to find your x to a legs if you can't identify this stuff guess what you're never going to be able to put on your Fibonacci levels, right? So it all goes hand in hand. So for you guys that are new to the platform, I know those first three courses, the Cornerstone, the Foundation 1, the Foundation 2, right? I know you can be, I guess, kind of um, tempted to rush through them because we're not talking about specific strategies, just more term and knowledge. But once you get to the Mastery course, which is the third course, you're going to see exactly why all of that information was very important because without it, you're not going to be able to do or understand any of the strategies and you're either going to get in trouble and trade them the wrong way or you're going to have to go all the way back to the beginning and restart so take my advice take your time through it learn those foundational concepts right it's like my, my kids in school now kindergarten right he's learning letters and their sounds and it's like well he can't spell words until he understands what the letters sound like so it's boring for him he's like a, a, a apple b, b, b banana but i'm like you got to notice because if you want to put words together if you want to read stuff you got to know what these individual elements sound like that way you can put them together and make the bigger thing. So pretty cool concept right there. Um, so anyway, enough of me rambling. So we have our, our first leg, which is going to be our X to A leg, this swing low to this swing high, this pink line. Our second leg is going to be right here. This is going to be called our A to B. You can see that it comes very close to a 618 retracement. Now, I don't have any rules that say very close. It either hits it or doesn't hit, hit it. It's black or white. So if it were to hit a 618 retracement, I would be on alert for a Gartley. It does not hit it, so I am on alert for a bat pattern. So what I'm gonna be looking for is this, and I'll kinda of go to my triangle deal here, if I can ever find where they're at. This is gonna be my X to A, this is gonna be my A to B, this next retracement is gonna be my B to C, and then my CD completion, right? So the completion point of my pattern formation is gonna be right down here at about 12020s. And although we have a D completion point, this could be looked at as a zone. So anywhere from this 886 down to the X leg, this is gonna be the completion zone for the bat 
pattern. So this is a bullish opportunity. You're looking to buy price action or buy at this level, whether you're buying aggressively with a limit order, whether you're buying, you're looking for a specific reason for entry in that box, that's gonna be up to you. But this is gonna be your opportunity to buy Euro Yen. Now just real quick, I don't think we have a cipher as well. That could be even bigger. Let me just check the fibs. Uh, just miss, okay, yeah, so we don't have our 127. All right, let's move on to our next one. All right, so Dollar Canada is our next one. It's gonna be very similar, just kind of inverse, right? Just, just flip your mind the other way, right? It's, it's actually a very similar move, right? You can see the same thing. We had this first impulse leg. We had this move right here, and then we had a second impulse leg right there. So we'll do the same thing, right? This would be a good kind of review. We bring our Fibonacci at, after we identify our X to A leg, our first move. We bring our Fibonacci retracement on. We see where does that second retracement come to, right? comes to a 50%, doesn't come to a 618, that eliminates the Gartley. It means that we're either looking for a cipher or a bat. As soon as we get that next leg that moves down here, we see that we don't extend, which means it takes cipher out of the equation. So at this point, we only know that we're looking for a bat pattern. So you can see that by following the rules, we're kind of just, you know, slowly chipping away at what it could be, what it can't be, and dialing in on the actual pattern. So to finish things up, X to A, A to B, B to C, same thing, looking for a CD completion. The D completion point is at that 886. The zone of that completion is gonna be from our 886 to our X leg. This is gonna be our potential reversal zone right here. This is a bearish opportunity. So with the Euro Yen, we're looking to buy. With this one on Canada, we are looking to sell. I think I got one more for you, perhaps. Um, yeah, so one more for you, and this, this will be interesting because this is gonna be the opposite, or not the opposite, but a different scenario. This is gonna be the pound Canada on the daily. And again, right, repeat the same process. We can see that we have an impulse leg. Why? Because we broke previous structure looking left. So this swing high to swing low is gonna be our X to A. Same thing, right? Boring, repetitive. We're gonna bring in a Fibonacci retracement from our swing high to our swing low right down here. Measure it out. Now this time, you can see it's a little bit different than the previous two examples, right? Where the other two fell shy of the 618, this one does hit the 618, right? So this is gonna eliminate that bat pattern. I now know that I'm looking for a Gartley pattern. A Gartley pattern has a different requirement. Instead of looking for that 886, now I need to do a, a, a different move, right? And I need to take a Fibonacci extension from swing low to swing high, and I didn't measure out that A to B move to project where that D completion is going to be. Now, same thing, we have our D completion or our projected D completion right here at the 127 extension. We can still go ahead and measure that zone and say anywhere from this 127 to this X leg is gonna be our reversal zone. This one's a little bit tricky because we have an overlapping level of structure. Um, so once you put your stops on, see if you're able to get above that. Um, if not, then maybe you just gotta deal with a bad stop placement, right? It's, it happens, we're not always gonna get a perfect stop placement. But this is also an advanced pattern formation. This is going to be a Gartley pattern. And as you can see with all of them, they all come when the market is in consolidation. So when we're seeing kind of these sideways movements, right? We're seeing patterns go back to back to back to back to back. Um, and that's gonna be something that can hedge against kind of your other trading forms like, uh, you know, like trend trading, any type of trend following where you need that directional movement. Now, there's another pair that was on my radar, but instead of me breaking it down for you, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring in one of the traders that I work with, Raymond Jeffries. You've seen him here on my channel. He did a guest feature um, probably about a month ago and you guys just loved it. In fact, you might've loved it more than my videos, which hurt me a little bit. I can't believe it. But he did a video this week. He does a lot of videos on his YouTube channel. I'll put all his info at the bottom for you to see, but he's actually breaking down one of the same opportunities that I was going to break down on the Aussie dollar. And I think it's cool. And I'll give you a little bit of my analysis right here. I think it's cool because it's always good to get different perspectives. And, and you guys on the platform, you see this a lot where myself and Jason Greystone may be looking at the same thing, but we look at it slightly differently. And, and you never know what's going to kind of, you know, 
affect you meaning i may say something that you're like oh yeah i do like using that jason gray so may look at something else oh yeah i should have been aware of that so getting different views on the same type of setup is, is cool and that's the cool thing about trading where as traders we're all unique we all like to handle things a little bit differently we all like to see things a little bit differently so to have different perspectives on a similar setup is cool um raymond does a great job of breaking this one down what i love about it and what i think you guys are going to love about it as well is he talks about the story behind the move. So we like to call it kind of price action psychology, where instead of just looking at candlesticks, you're asking yourself, well, what does this actually mean? Printing a story in your head. What does this lower low mean? What does this equal low mean? And I know for me personally, it helps me kind of understand the markets better. So check it out. I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe to Raymond's YouTube channel. Make sure you follow him on social media. Again, I'll put all his information at the bottom. He's giving a, an amazing amount of free content out. Um, and he's just a good dude, man. He's a good dude. He's going to be a great trader one day. Um, so check it out. Um, and with that being said, like I said, I'd like to give you guys a little update. Let's hop into the chart so I can show you those examples. Before, how I kind of, I think we're all, when we're newer to trading, we're all kind of taught that.
I want to get in at a better price, I would think to myself, oh, I want to get in here because I look at all the profit, all the extra profit I can make if I get into this trade early, if I get in at a better price. It was just greed. It wasn't necessarily me thinking, oh, I want to get in at a better price. It was more than me thinking, oh, I want to make more money. And um, well, what, what ended up what happening was I would get in on this, you know, trend line hit or where, whatever it is before the actual break of the descending triangle or ascending into this opposite direction. And what would happen is price would just come up stop me out and i would be upset thinking to myself man what happened like i this was a descending triangle it was a perfect setup you know and then i got involved and of course price goes against me stops me out and i'm you know i'm over here being beating myself up over it but then you know as i'm getting further along in my trading journey i'm realizing that this is a, an actual very aggressive entry because i'm getting involved into this descending triangle when it's not even confirmed the breakout or confirmed the descending triangle because I would need to have a break at this level. And this is actually the most aggressive way to get involved. I mean, you can get in at a better price, definitely. Um, but as I've gone along in my trading journey, I need a little bit more confirmation. So what, how I personally would be playing it is I'm gonna wait for some type of break at this level. And I'm waiting for some type of break and then some type of pullback into this, into this level, uh, as you can see, like, once was past support becomes resistance. So I'm gonna wait for price to come back into this level and look for some type of entry. If you are a little bit more aggressive, what you could do is you can just have your sell orders set right below this level of support. So as soon as price breaks this level, you get involved and you can have your stop somewhere placed above, you know, one of these highs along the way and you can get involved that way. And you can, so the next thing you would ask yourself, okay, well, if I'm, getting, if I'm looking to get involved in some type of breakout trade or some type of, you know, retest and pullback, where am I predicting price to go? You know, you have to you have to make a prediction on not just the setup, but where you're thinking price is going to go to make sure it's even worth it for you to get involved. So when we go down to the, it's a little easier to see here on the daily. So we're you know we're gonna just go here to the daily. I don't trade off the daily, but I do like I said I come here to get a higher perspective in regards to what's going on. Our next level of support is right down here. So, okay, so I know that this is my next level of support. Maybe overall, I'm predicting price to go to this level. Um, but what I could also do is I can incorporate some type of fibs. I can incorporate, you know, one-to-one -one measure moves to see, you know, make a prediction on where I'm thinking price is going to go. So if, say, price, like I said, price is descending, I'm waiting for this level to break. What, you know, what else could I do? I can use a one-to-one -one measure move from this leg down to here, from this leg down here. And I can map it out. Okay, so this is the area right here I can predict price to go. And then all right, what else could I use? I can use some type of Fibonacci extension tool. I can go from swing high to swing low and back. I can see I have a 127 lining up right here with that one-to-one -one measured move. So that's looking that's looking pretty, it's looking like a decent area to be looking for targets. Um, what else I could, what else could I ask myself? Okay, well, what else could I use? Um, I can use some, I can also use a Fibonacci extension from this leg right here as well. From swing, oh, sorry. Go from swing high to swing low. See if there's any fibs that line up. I have a 1618 right below that zone. So, you know, it's good to see this, all this confluence in one area because it'll give me a clear area where I'm predicting the, the market to go and where price can get exhausted at. And then actually, what else can we use? We can use a Fibonacci um, retracement tool from this leg. So we go from swing low to swing high and see if there's anything that lines up in there and we have a 786. So you can see we have a clear cluster here in regards to where we can predict price to go. So we can predict price to go somewhere to this level to about 93. So there's a nice even handle number as well. So that would be a good level to look for price to go. So if I'm predicting price to go there, I'm looking for a breakout. And ask my, like I said, you can ask yourself, depending on the type of trade you are, there's a couple different ways you can get involved. Like I said, you can wait for that retest of this trend line, wait for some type of break. You could have your have your buy order set below here. You can play it for that complete break of this level. You can either wait for a confirmation of a lower low, lower close, and then get involved on that candle. Or like I said, you can, you know, how I personally trade is I would I would need some type of confirmation. Then I can look to get a part of some type of pullback and then playing it for a move lower. So, you know, like I said, there's a plethora of ways just depending on the type of trade you are and your personality. Um, but like I said, the most aggressive way is to play it for some type of pullback into this level. Like I said, the, and the reason why that is aggressive and I never really understood it before is because you're actually getting involved before the, the, before the pattern even plays out. So just be mindful of that. 
um, and just when we going down to the hourly until you know until this level does break we'll see what we could be getting involved in the hourly is my trading time frame and I can be I, you know, see if you want to get involved in um, let's see where we're at we're at a level support and this was actually the Gartley I wanted to show that played out for me this past week you know, X to A A to B you can see we hit a 618 retracement here and we go from A to B for our C leg we at least hit a 618 retracement and our D leg is a 127 extension right there uh, right there at about 7069s, 7068s. I, I front run by a few pips, so we go X to A, A to B, B to C, and a C to D completion up there. So I, in this trade in particular, I just got involved in um, conservative, not, not conservative targets, conventional targets. I'm at the 382 and the 618. As you can see, both targets were hit, so it was a good trade. And not only a good trade because I made money, but a good trade because I followed my rules, and you know that's that's the most important thing. So now, like I said, me personally, I'm just waiting for this level to break. Do I really want to, is this anything in, in here telling me I want to get long at this point? Not really. Um, I don't really see any type of double bottoms or anything clear like that where I want to get involved. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to just talk yourself into trades just because, um, you know, we're at certain levels in the market. I think the cleaner move, the better move is to personally, like I said, wait for a break at this level and then look for some type of, you know, like I said, if you're a breakout trader, wait for that breakout or you can wait for some type of trend, you know, pull back trade into this level or get involved in that descending triangle on a retest of the trend line that's not the type of trader i am but like i said we all don't trade the same way that's the beauty of trading we all have our own styles and this is not my style but hey it does look pretty attractive i'm not gonna lie especially if you can get a part of some type of retest right here you can place your stops above this little previous high that can give you a pretty decent risk reward you know like i said depending on where that that level is hit risk reward that looks something like this ATR right now is about 34 pips so 34 pips above this level is about 80 let's see 34 30 about 93s somewhere in that range say if, even if you were going for a retest of the lows that would look something like this and what you could do is you could even you know take off a piece at the lows and then you can play it for a move lower if you want, you know, if you like, say, if you want to be a little bit more conservative with your with your targets, you can like, say, it's a good one to one. If you ever stops in ATR above these highs, you can play it for like it's retail to the lows, take half the position off, and then play the other half for a break of that level. So you know, different ways to play. But that being said, let's hop on to the next. As always, guys, if you like what you saw, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, make sure that notification bell is hit. If you're new, that way you don't miss my next video, that way you don't miss my next podcast episode. And of course, if you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video or really anything trading in general, leave it below. I have an awesome podcast, the Trading Coach Podcast. Many of the topics from that podcast come from you guys. So it comes from the comments that you leave me under these YouTube videos. It comes from the messages that you send me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, we're producing high quality content. We're touching so many traders out there. Um, and again, just the podcast is for you, by you. So I love discussing the topics that you guys wanna hear. So keep them coming, they, they keep me sharp as well, which is big. So until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Reminder, clocks are going back in the US this week. So we're finally caught up after that weird one week time change thing. Um, I'll see you guys in the Q&A in Monday. I'll see you guys in the live rooms throughout the rest of the week. And uh, you guys take care.